Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to an updated handbag video. If you've been keeping up with my videos, you know. I'm trying to declutter my life. I just want to be in a more minimalistic space where I've kind of curated my handbag collection, my makeup collection, my clothing collection, and I feel like fall is going to be the perfect time for me to declutter. However, I just wanted to go through my handbags today, and I'm hoping that you guys can help me decide which handbags I should get rid of in terms of selling them, and kind of just help me curate the best handbag collection. I'm going to give you the ins and outs of each and every handbag that I own. I did upload a handbag video about a year ago. I will go ahead and link that up here as well as down below. A lot of those handbags in that video I still do have. However, I do have an additional five handbags that I did not mention in that video because I did not own them. For all the handbags that I have owned that were mentioned in that previous video, I'm not going to go into too, too much detail of them, but just know that if there is a handbag here that I did mention in my last video, you can find the details, the prices, the story behind it, so on and so forth down below. But I'm kind of hoping to make this kind of like a rundown of all the handbags, the ones that I wear the most, the ones that I wear the least, the ones that I'm thinking about selling, and the ones that I will never sell because they mean too much to me. So without further ado, make sure you're subscribed if you have not subscribed yet, and be sure to click the bell button notification next to subscribe if you would like to get notification whenever a video goes live here on my channel. I'm definitely going to be uploading a very updated jewelry collection. So if you're interested in jewelry, make sure you are subscribed and click the bell. This way you're notified when my latest jewelry collection goes live. In today's video, I'm going to have an array of different price points. A lot of my handbags, you will know if you watched my previous handbag collection or if you watch my videos, but a lot of my handbags I have purchased secondhand. I personally love Fashion File. I also really like the Real Real, but I've shopped on Fashion File the most. So that's just my favorite. I also do shop on Poshmark. However, please do know that you need to be careful because if it is not, I believe, above $500, they do not authenticate it. So you could be paying a premium price point for a knockoff. You have been forewarned, but I will go ahead and let you guys know where I have purchased each and every bag. So I thought we would start with the bags that I am just considering getting rid of just because I simply don't use them. I'm also going to give you tips and tricks in this video on how to build your handbag collection if you are new to the handbag world. Let's start off with these bags. I'm thinking about getting rid of these. I mentioned them in my previous handbag collection. Collection. I have not used this specific bag in years. I mentioned it in that video, but there's no shape to it. There's no zipper to it. When Mike and I are out to eat or I'm out with whoever hanging out and I go to put this on the table, it's kind of just like, will my things survive? Will they not survive? Am I going home with the lipstick that I brought or is it going to be lost in the abyss of the world? I love this handbag. Honestly, looking at it, it makes me so happy. It brings me so much joy. I'm thinking like maybe I'll bring it down to the beach house and leave it there. I have worn this so many times when Mike and I have gone on like tropical or Caribbean vacations. We have not done that in quite a few years at this point. The last time I used this, I believe we were in the Bahamas and I haven't been to the Bahamas in probably a good like four, maybe five years. So I am thinking about getting rid of this, but let me know your thoughts. In terms of creating your handbag collection, I do want to mention there are different styles of handbags. And I think it's very important to do your research, especially if you're someone where you want to invest a decent amount of money in a handbag. It doesn't need to be thousands upon thousands, but premium price point could be, you know, 250 to $500. That's still a lot of money. A lot of money, despite how much money it is, in my opinion, if you're spending your money on something that you're not going to use. So for me, I love these kind of like day time handbags where they have a little handle, but this is not my go-to kind of handbag style. I am someone where I get really flustered and I get really frustrated easily and I'm always carrying a bajillion things. I vlog, so I always have a camera. I have my phone. Oftentimes I'll bring my husband's glasses wherever we're going. Small bags are not always ideal for me, but you know, I think it's good to have an array within your collection, but it takes time to get there. But I think if you're going to invest in a handbag, it needs to be a handbag that you love. So while these were not a lot of money. These were all under $100. I think that this one was $75 and maybe this one was $60, but I did buy these quite a few years ago. So it's not like any money lost in my opinion because I know that I'm not going to get my return on investment in a handbag that I just wear on the crook of my arm or a top handle. So personally for me, there are all different kinds of handbags. We know there's a shoulder bag, there's a crossbody bag, top handle bag. What other handbags are there? It's kind of escaping me 
at this very moment in time, but I don't really gravitate towards top handle bags. I would say my handbag of choice is always a shoulder bag. All of my designer handbags, the ones that I've spent more money on, nine out of 10 times they are shoulder bags. So I think it's really important to do your research, get a good idea as to what handbag fits your lifestyle. Thinking about getting rid of these two, do let me know what you think. If I do get rid of any of these, I'm going to sell them on my Poshmark. I will link my Poshmark store down below in case you're interested in buying any of these things. Another bag that kind of like pulls on my heartstrings to even think about getting rid of it because it's so sentimental to me is this Michael Kors tote bag. The reason why I'm thinking about getting rid of it though is just because it's really heavy. It's got a lot of hardware. It's heavy with nothing in it and it is a really big bag. I've had this for quite some time. I've had this for like at least 10 years if not more. I love this bag. I lusted over this bag for a really long time. I bought this when I was living at home with my parents when I was working at Michael Kors as a sales associate right out of college and it just holds a lot of memories for me. So I'm not going to get rid of her just yet but I am thinking about it but do be sure to let me know what you think. It's just like the way that I use her I like to throw in my laptop. I like to just load her because she's such a big bag but the problem with loading her is that I can't carry her for a long duration of time. I oftentimes will bring her with me when I am say going to a coffee shop to work which between you I rarely ever happens when I go to my mom's if I'm gonna work from my mom's house to spend the day with her when I'm working just when I'm working because when I'm working I'm going somewhere I'm plopping myself down and not only am I plopping myself down but I'm also plopping my handbag down I would not bring this for like a day out of like shopping or like sightseeing this is a very niche kind of bag for me a very circumstantial bag and I also think that that's something to consider when you're creating your handbag collection are you someone that goes to the coffee shop? Are you someone that works from home where you like to plop yourself in different places? And this is a great handbag for you because you're not having to schlep it to different places for long periods of time. However, I just don't live my life like that. You know, I travel to and from the city. I commute to work and on days that I'm working from home, a lot of the times now I'm sitting at my house. I'm not really going places to work because I'm so busy that I can't like work at a coffee shop. It's just, it's not my lifestyle at the moment. That's not to say that my lifestyle won't change and this will become more usable to me but currently where I am right now she is on the chopping block but let me know your thoughts she's really beautiful old school Michael Kors very soft supple leather she's expensive and I love her and I don't know so probably not but it just like kills me because she sits in my office and I just stare at her every day when I'm working and I just think about all the places that I could be with her but I am not. I believe this is on my Poshmark account already, but I did just want to mention this. My DVF clutch, I mentioned this in my last video. I do like her and I do struggle with selling her simply because I'm not a clutch bag kind of girl, but I just think I have personally evolved from this within my handbag collection. I don't love clutches because I like to be hands-free. I'm thinking I kind of want to like elevate my clutch collection. This is literally the only clutch that I have to something that has like a little top handle or like a strap that's removable. This way I can wear it multiple ways, but also have the kind of sophisticated clutch option for nights where I kind of want to get dressed up and look a bit more fanciful. Let me know, is there a clutch bag that you have your eye on? I would love to hear it. I definitely am in the market for a clutch bag. However, I'm also on a no buy this month, so tis what it is. But down the road, I definitely see a new clutch bag in my future. Another bag that I don't use, and this is also gonna bring up a tip from me to you. Now, this is a tip that I say all the time. However, I never take my own advice. Isn't that funny? I feel like it's easy to give advice, not always so easy to take your own advice. I bought this when Mike and I were on our honeymoon in Rome. It comes with a crossbody that I never use, but I just leave it inside. This is my phone. I don't have an absurdly large phone. This is like your average size phone, but my phone doesn't fit in here. I can't close this without, yeah, I can't close it with my phone inside. And I just feel like that looks silly to walk around like this. The only time that I bring this bag is when I'm wearing jeans or some kind of pant that has a pocket. This way I can literally just throw in my lipstick, my lip liner, and a small wallet, my keys, and call it a day. This does not fit a lot. If you're interested in seeing some of my handbags and what fits inside of them, I do upload shorter form videos here on YouTube as well as on my TikTok. It's kind of like a what's in my bag. So if you're interested in any of these I will list all my corresponding like what's in my handbag videos down below but not much fits in this it does have legs on the bottom I love it it is super cute it is a vibe she is straight off the plane from Italy I bought one for my aunt but just this thing where I just feel like sometimes when I'm shopping retail 
therapy moment where I just black out and I forget to load stuff in my handbag that I'm thinking about purchasing. You know, recently I was thinking about purchasing a Louis Vuitton trunk bag. I will put a picture of it here. But that time I was smart and I went to Louis Vuitton and I told myself to put stuff in it and it didn't hold all of my essentials and so I decided against it. However, recently if you watched my Fendi, what did I buy from Fendi vlog, I did purchase another bag which we will get into because it is a newer bag and I do want to keep the newer bags towards the end of this video just to keep you watching. I did not put anything in that bag and I'm not gonna lie like while I love the bag and I have used it pretty much every weekend since I purchased it because when I go to work I just use a Chimmy backpack. I do kind of regret it like it was kind of like a silly purchase but we're gonna get there. Another bag that I don't really use that often and but this is like <sighs> It's kind of shocking. I don't know. So my last handbag video, I kind of like sang to the mountaintops that this was my favorite bag within my collection. And I also said to not be shocked if the next time I upload a handbag video, I had another one of these. I also said that if I had to pay the price point, like the full price point for this, I would pay it because I bought this on Poshmark. I spent around a thousand dollars on this, but these retail for three thousand to thirty five hundred dollars. This is a Goriard tote. I have the one with the zipper and the leather leg and I loved this. This was my work bag. I brought this to and from New York City every time I traveled. However, now that I'm uploading more in terms of YouTube, I like to bring my laptop to and from the office. This way I can edit videos on the bus when I'm commuting and I just can't carry two laptops because I do have to carry my work laptop every day as well. So I'm carrying my Mac, which I do all of my personal editing on, and I'm carrying my Lenovo, which is my work laptop, and it's just too heavy for a shoulder bag. So consequently, this bag has kind of suffered. I have not reached for her. Sometimes when Mike and I are going to and from the beach house, I'll stuff her with stuff, but I got a really sad, I'll grab it at the end of this video, but I got a canvas bag that like someone at my job gave me. It's like the best canvas bag ever. And it's like cheapy, like something that the person that gave it to me, one of the women, she got it at an event that she went to. The best bag for throwing my shit in it because I don't have to worry about the bag. It's not a designer bag. It's literally like an LL Bean, let's say canvas bag. And that has kind of replaced this. I might end up selling her. She's definitely on the chopping block. I've had a lot of good times with her, but I have like only owned her for maybe like a little bit over a year. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. This was kind of like a trend that I got really excited about. I'm happy I didn't get too excited about it because if I had spent $3,000 on another one of these, I'd be really upset. So just wanted to mention that when I closed out my last video, I did mention that this was one of my favorite bags if not my most favorite bag, and now I'm thinking about selling her. Also another reason why you should really get to know yourself and your style, I do understand that our style changes as we age, as we evolve, but I'm realizing that I kind of like more simpler things. I do like more of like a statement bag. I love a designer logo. I am from New Jersey, and I love gaudy, and I love flashy. That for me, I just feel like I like an everyday tote that doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. And so my preference has just changed. Another bag that I have not been using lately, but I will definitely be using her more in the fall and winter is my Valentino. My tote bag. I love her. It's a soft leather. I spend practically like no money in comparison on how much these are. I think these retail for like $300. No, $300. I wish. I think these retail for like $3,000. I think I got her for like five or $600 when Fashion File had their Black Friday sale. So she is pre-loved. She came with no signs of wear. She has crossbody strap. But she's just great. I like how light she is. She feels like nothing. She's a really soft, supple leather. She's pebbled leather, so she will last a lifetime. She doesn't show wear. She doesn't so show scratches. Definitely a more winter her fall bag when that season comes around which it is swiftly approaching I will definitely reach for this bad boy again other bags I'm just like not really gravitating a lot towards lately this one my husband bought for me it is a YSL I believe it's the medium Lulu bag I just don't wear her a lot I don't wear her enough I am definitely more of a gold girl so this has silver hardware Mike bought this for me for my birthday quite a few years ago it was like in the midst of COVID and it was such an exciting birthday present for me to receive and I really love it and it holds a very near and dear place to my heart black leather bags I have fun bags which were that sounds that sounds inappropriate but you know what I mean I have fun handbags I like to use in the summer as much as possible because I just feel like the summer season the spring and summer goes by like that so this is definitely more fall winter she's cute I will definitely wear her I just feel like she's a little what's the word 
I feel like we all got really excited about her. I was one of those people. I'm just not really vibing with her, but I'm not going to sell her because I do think that I would regret selling her, but maybe in the future I will replace her from my collection with something else. But let me know. Do you own this bag? What do you think about this bag? I love it because my husband bought it for me. It is a really soft, supple leather. She holds a lot inside. I love that she can be a shoulder strap or a crossbody strap. I'm not a big crossbody girl. However, I did just buy a new crossbody bag. Elevated, classy, like can take her on a night out, but she's also kind of grungy and casual. She's very versatile, but I don't know. I just, I think because she's black, I just haven't been gravitating towards her lately. Two other black bags that I just want to quickly mention because I have mentioned them before. I don't wear these as much right now, but again, that's simply because it's spring and summer. However, I love the two of these. This is an Alexander McQueen bag. This was like hot and poppin' back in the day. I just feel like she is a beautiful, very deceiving bag. She is small, but she is mighty. She can fit a lot in here. This was like the first designer handbag that I ever bought myself that was not discounted. I believe I spent like four or $500 on her. My first designer handbag I bought when I was 27. And I just wanna mention this, if you are watching this video, it does not matter how much you spend on a handbag. You do not need to buy Chanel. You do not need to buy Valentino. Buy whatever makes you feel confident and comfortable. Some of my favorite handbags, which we're going to get into, are not designer handbags. You do not need to spend your hard-earned money on a handbag. Do not spend outside of your means. And I said this in my last handbag video. There's this culture going around right now where it's like rich culture and people on social media, I feel like make other people feel like in order to be worthy or to be cool, they need to spend their money on designer things. We don't need designer things, okay? You don't need them. And that might sound hypocritical from me considering I have quite a few designer handbags, but if you are someone that wants designer handbags, you can find, again, pre-loved handbags at a fraction of the price on websites like Fashion File. And there are crazy sales, especially during the holiday season. I know Fashion File has an amazing Black Friday sale where they discount things and then depending on how much you spend, you get another 100, 200, 300, 500 dollars off. But just keep your eyes open, do your research, and be patient. And if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on handbags, girlfriend, you don't need to. I love this. I will not be getting rid of her, but I just wanted to mention her. She's spiky. She's cool. She's just like a very edgy bag. She holds a very special place in my heart, so I will not be getting rid of her. And then I've learned to love this little lady. I actually named her lady. I used to wish that she was a classic flap, but I really love I don't know if you can see. It's like a wine colored, like brownish purple top handle. The strap can come on and off. I like that it could be a crossbody. So this is what it looks like. I feel like it's very me. It's different and not a lot of people own this handbag, which is something that I like. You know, I do like the trendy bags, clearly. Um, but I think I love most things that are unique to me. And I feel like this is a pretty unique Chanel bag and not on top of everyone's list. I'm really happy that I have it and she's a vibe and I like the chevron here. I like the print. She's a pebble leather so I don't need to worry about her getting scratched. She holds a decent amount of stuff even though she doesn't look too big. This is my baby and I don't wear her a lot in the spring or summer but I'm very excited to whip her out in the fall winter months. Valentino bags. I've spoken about both of these because I've had both of these for quite a long time. I love Valentino bags. Valentino will elevate any kind of outfit, especially because of the rock studs, which I don't want to talk about a lot because I talked about it in my last video. This is definitely my favorite one. I bought this for a fraction of the price. I bought this on Fashion File. This retails for like $3,000. I think I purchased her for around $1,200. I just, she's everything and more. I can't say enough about her. She is so soft, like this leather is so soft. She carries a decent amount of stuff for quite a small bag. She also comes with a crossbody strap. However, the strap is really uncomfortable. I actually don't even know where the strap is because I took it off and then I don't know where I relocated it, but it's okay because I honestly don't use it. But it's quite literally like a chain strap and it digs into my shoulder. It's very uncomfortable. It fits me really strangely. Like the strap is way too long. This is the exception to my crook of the arm bag. I wear her like this. Or I'll wear her like this. Girls day out, lunching, date night. I will keep her forever because I lusted over her for the longest time. This is also a Valentino bag. This is more daytime. I bought this for when Mike and I went on our honeymoon in Italy. I like that she has a top handle, but again, she also has a removable crossbody strap. You have the rock studs, and I like the color of this. This is more of a nude, beigey. I think that this is called Poudre, whereas the one that I just showed you is a bit more 
like beigey pink so this is like nude kind of like taupey and this is more pinky but i love the two of them they are so great and i like this one because it helps me to be hands-free carefree she was great when i went to europe with her just a really great bag she doesn't hold too too much but she holds enough and i like how she locks here and i stuff her as well but this is what the inside looks like very nice. I think that Valentino bags are well worth their price point. Again, I did buy this one full price and I think it was around, they definitely jacked the price up since I bought this because I think I bought this handbag in 2019 before COVID and it's definitely more. But I think at the time when I purchased it, it was $900 and I love her. I had a gift card and I was like, you know what, why not? Like I was saying, I think the Valentino holds its value. This one's beautifully made. It is leather on the outside. It has the rock studs. And then on the inside, it has suede. So it's not like cloth, which sometimes, you know, we buy cloth bags <clears throat> myself. It's kind of like, what did I spend my money on? Like, was it, is, was the price point really valid? And it's not. But with Valentino bags, I really feel the craftsmanship is there. I love that, you know, this one, leather on, on the inside, leather on the outside. Beautifully made. I will have these handbags forever in a lifetime and I will eventually pass them on to someone who is a fashion addict um, who I love very dearly. So that is that. I love Valentino. If ever in doubt, buy Valentino. My two favorite handbags at the very moment, these are like my spring, summer. I love them and they are definitely at a premium price point. I have literally spoken about these at nauseum and these were also included in my last video. However, I don't, I don't remember if I said that these are my favorite. The green is no longer available. However, you can get your hands on the the white one. I love these hobo bags. I am someone where I very much enjoy a neutral look to my clothing. I love neutral clothes. And then I like to throw on a pop of color like this to just give my outfit some life. I'm a bag lady. Like when I go places, if I have a small ass bag, I will have two other bags to supplement the fact that I can't fit everything in my small bag. So these are just amazing because they can fit everything. So I can fit my Kindle. I can fit my large wallet, my sunglasses, Mike's glasses, just anything and everything. I think I've done a what's in my bag before. Um, and it's hard to show because it's just the way that it's shaped but let me see if i can it's just so freaking good and they come with a little wristlet inside so you're getting two bags for the price of one i would say if i had to pick between the two i just this green is everything to me these have been the handbags of my spring summer i highly recommend them they are currently on sale again i think the green is discontinued but the white one is on sale i originally paid about three something for them they are shipped from italy though so do keep in mind that you do need to to pay shipping fees i think the shipping and customs it comes out to like 40 maybe 50 bucks to import it these are definitely at a more premium price point a little bit more affordable i think they are on sale for about 175 at this moment i will link it down below you will not regret this purchase the most amazing bags which is the perfect segue into my newer bags that I did not mention in my previous video. Let me scoot you in a little bit because I forgot to scoot you in again after my battery died. So my favorite bag. However, you can tell this is a very dark bag, an eggplant bag. I wore the crap out of this in the winter and the fall. It comes with a crossbody strap. The crossbody strap is ridiculously awkward. I absolutely hate it. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in my closet for my birthday because I had purchased so many bags from M. Jemmy last year. I bought the two hobo bags that I just showed you. I bought this bag and I bought my mom um, a purple bag for Christmas. For my birthday, they were so sweet and they sent me this shoulder strap. Now, we're going to go back to the conversation that we had in the beginning of this video about how you need to find the kind of handbag that fits your lifestyle best. This way you don't regret it, you don't find it to be annoying, and you will just get the most wear and you, in turn you get your return on investment so when they sent me this strap it changed the game for me in terms of this bag because i hate the crossbody it is a very long length granted i could go to a leather what are they called on the tip of my tongue well you know someone where i could go and they could punch a hole in it and change the the strap length for me i just i don't like the strap but when they sent me this shoulder strap it was game changing because now she is a shoulder bag a little like bowling bag 
other than the crossbody though she does have a little top handle which i do like the top handle it is super cute but again i like to be hands-free this can kind of get annoying so this just elevated my handbag to a whole other level i love the detail of the zipper this thing is so large the bucket bag like you can fit everything you could possibly need and then some in this bag this is one of my favorite handbags i'm telling you you don't need to spend a load of money on handbags in order to love them. I believe this one was, I'm gonna say it was like 200, maybe 250. It does come in a smaller size that I believe is like 150 to 175, but I will link everything that you can possibly get your hands on down below, including this bag. It comes in an array of colors, but I just like loved the distressed look of this bag, how pretty the color is. It's just so different. It's purple. It gets the wear of a black bag. It's eggplant, but in some lightings, it's kind of navy. It's just such an interesting handbag another new handbag now i bought this on poshmark i believe i bought this for about 400 dollars but the way that poshmark works is you sell stuff if you are willing you know you can sell or you can buy or you can do both i do both so i will go ahead and sell things on poshmark and then sometimes i cash out but nine times out of ten i will go ahead and use whatever money i make on poshmark to buy something else so oh no it was definitely more than 500 because they authenticated it but this is a gucci d-ring this is old school vintage bag it's called d-ring because if you hold it to the side it's a d i don't know are you like supposed to put keys on this or something i never hang anything off of this but i just really like this i love vintage gucci like this print is everything and then some gucci actually came out with throwback tote that has this print on it i really love it but it's just like I know I'm not going to use it because it's like too big of a tote in my opinion and I just know like my preferences because we all know we've been talking about finding your preference of handbags and I know I'm not going to use it and I'm not going to get my cost per wear but I bought this on Poshmark. I really have not worn this too too much. I was in a phase where I wore it a bit there I think for like two months I went heavy on this but this is like an awkward size because it's small so I can fit my phone, I can fit my wallet, it's just I wish it were like a tad bit bigger however I really love this. It took me a really long time. I really wanted this bag for a very long time, but it was hard to find one in pristine condition. And so I'm just really happy about it. It's very like 90s Y2K vibes. And I feel like I will wear her very much so in the fall just because she gives very fall colors. I mean, these are year round colors, but I just like to get my greens and my pinks and like my more fun handbags out of the way during the spring summer so that in the longer months, the fall winter, I can use, you know, these more non-specific season bags, if that makes sense. Another newer handbag that I purchased, I actually did an unboxing when I purchased this about a year ago. I think I got her in August. I purchased her on Fashion File secondhand. I wanted just like a moon bag. I love the moon bag shape and I love that it says Fendi in big old letters on the bottom. I love this size. Now I think that this is the small, but don't quote me. I will put all the information down below, but I'm pretty sure this is the small Fendi, Fendi Griffey bag. Do I think this is worth the money? Now I think it's worth the money more so than the other Fendi Griffey bag. Fendigraphy. That's so hard to say. That I bought um, less than a month ago, which I'm going to show you. What I don't love about this bag is that the inside of it is cloth, and for the price point, granted, I did spend a fraction of the price, so I don't feel as terribly bad about it because I bought it on Fashion File. I think I got this for about $1,200. It retails for, hmm, is it $2,500 or $3,000? So I got her for like a third of the price. She's so comfortable. I love the color. In some lights, it's taupe. In some lights, it's brown. She has that little like pop of fun in the back when she says Fendi and I am just like a gold girl but I do wish that the inside was suede or leather or something because I just feel like that would make it more worth the price point on the inside it's just black cloth but this is like the perfect size bag she's just so beautiful she's timeless she's classic I will have her for a lifetime and more I'm pretty sure just the shape of it is so classic you will see a lot of her again more so in the fall winter months. My two most recent handbags, I bought this for my birthday, for myself, for my 33rd birthday, YSL. I think it's called like Lay 7 or something. It's like LE7, I don't know. Again, I will link everything down below. I think this color is called Barley, but it's like an olive green suede bag. She is a vibe. I really feel like if I were to be reincarnated into a handbag, which that is not something like I would ever wanna be re, I mean, I don't know. 
But this is like literally me in a handbag. I feel like it's very chic. It's very luxe, but it's also like very boho, laid back. I don't know. It's just, if I were a handbag, this would be me. And I hope that that makes sense. Her name is Olive. One of my subscribers named her. I purchased her at the beginning of spring because I am an April baby. I was born on April 4th. I bought her right before my birthday. Mike was on, where did he go? He went somewhere for, for work. And I feel bad because I always blame him for all of like my splurges, but he left me and I had nothing to do. It was like the dead of, not the dead of winter. Like there was light at the end of the tunnel, but I will put down below when I bought this. Was it February? I don't know. But Mike left me for 10 days. He went to another country. He, we were in like totally different time zones. I had nothing to do. I had no plans. So I took my ass to Short Hills Mall and I just went on a shopping spree. And this is something that I bought. When I bought it, I somehow convinced myself that this would be appropriate for all year round. And the sales associate, bless her, Layla, I had such a good time with her. She lied to me and she told me that she agreed that it could be an all year round bag. I just feel like, you know, considering when I'm filming this, it's August 5th and it's 96 degrees outside. Nobody wants to be walking around with a suede bag. It's just sticky and it will stick to you. Um, but she is my latest addition. I love, no, she's not because I bought one after this, but one of my latest additions. I love the gold strap. I also like that it's brushed gold, so it's not too bright of a gold. This is her on my arm. I just think I will get so much wear out of her, especially in the fall winter months. I I'm not using her now that it has been heat wave after heat wave after heat wave. She's well worth the money. I did buy her at the YSL store in the Short Hills Mall. If I could go back in time, I would hone in on the itty bitty bit of patience that I sometimes have somewhere deep within me. And I would have purchased her in the secondhand market. I like YSL, but I don't like YSL is not Chanel. YSL is not Hermes. It's not going to skyrocket in price in the secondhand market. If I could go back in time, I would have waited and scope this out on Fashion File or First Dibs or The Real Real, but I didn't and I am happy with my purchase. I think I'll be more happy once I get to actually use her. She is just like a bucket bag and I think that she's worth the price. Am I happy that I paid the price? No, but I think she's worth it because there is suede all along the inside. It is suede and leather on the inside. There is not inch of cloth to be found. It's leather on the very bottom. I don't know if you can see. What is in here? I have stuff in here. Receipts and I have tissue. Nothing exciting. And it also has a pocket in here. I don't know if you could see, but a pocket that's attached. Never don't know what's in my bag with her, but stay tuned because, again, I just feel like this is like the perfect fall vibe. Oh, she's so stunning, gorgeous, beautiful. I think one of my best handbag purchases. Last but not least, I bought this bag a couple weeks ago. Fendi Fendigraphy. So the same bag as this, but in a smaller size. So again, I think that this is small and then this is nano. So this is strictly a crossbody bag. I don't know if you can see, this is new for the fall 2024 collection. It has nude double Fs everywhere. On the bottom, it says Fendi as well because this is what all the Fendi Graffiti bags have. It has this removable strap, which I like the strap because alternatively what you're supposed to do is fold it like this and it's like a fortune cookie bag and it's so cute and I love it. Like it is a vibe. It is a crook of your arm kind of bag. Cute because my name is Fortune and it looks like a fortune cookie and it has F's all over it for fortune. It is a very me in a bag handbag. I just wish that when I had purchased this, I took the time to take all of my things out of my handbag that I went shopping with to see what fit in here because not a lot fits in here. Even less fits in here when you wear it like a fortune cookie bag. Most of the time I just throw it as a crossbody. And again, I don't love crossbody bags, but I do like the length of this crossbody. Fits me pretty well. It hits me right at where I like my crossbodies to fit. This is what she looks like. I just wish again that the bag was bigger and I wish that I took my own damn advice and tried to move in, you know, tried to move in before purchasing her. But I don't think that this handbag was worth it and I would not advise you to buy this simply because it is cloth everywhere. The only leather thing about it is the leather strap and then the leather little like piping along the edges, but this is not real gold, okay? Otherwise this bag would be a bajillion dollars. And on the inside, it is just regular schmegular cloth, much like the other Fendi bag. So I don't know who she is because I've done nothing but shop at Fendi um, most recently in terms of my handbags and whatnot. I love Fendi, like it is a vibe, it speaks to me. These are my colors, I love nudes. I just, again, it, just, it goes with everything and anything. And even though it is a little bit loud with the Fs and the Fendi, I just think that the color scheme kind of like levels it out. I have in here my little wallet. I have my fan that I could honestly use right now. It's so hot in my closet. Oh my God, especially in front of this window. Lipstick, 
and a lip pencil, lippy pen, what am I saying? A lip liner. My phone's right here, I could fit my phone in here. Like, I could fit enough, but the problem is, like I said, I take my vlogging camera with me. Oftentimes I carry sunglasses, my husband's sunglasses. I'm just, I'm like the bag lady, which is fine. I love that because I love handbags and I just, I love things. And it's something that I'm working on. I'm trying to love things less. I just wish she was a little bit bigger. Like I wish that the Nano was the size of the small and then I think we could all sing Kumbaya. When I went there, I asked my sales associate, Ashley, if they had it in a larger size. And she said that in this print, this is the only bag that exists. But if this print does well, that they will come out with other variations of this bag so I don't know I just I really couldn't pass it up I love the print she's beautiful I was so excited about it I got such a high about it when I was in the store because I went and I bought this at Fendi for full price this is not worth how much I paid for it I'm gonna tell you straight up I was foolish foolish but excited and I had that kind of like buyer's high so much so that I blacked out I didn't move any of my crap into it fast forward I bought it on a Friday, I believe, or a Saturday. I think it was Saturday. <sighs> yeah, I bought it on Saturday. And then by Monday, I was kind of like regretting it because again, we are trying to curate a collection that we're going to love. And I said to myself, self, I thought of the eggplant bag that I put everything away as I was going because my stupid camera kept dying. But I thought of my eggplant bag and I was like, oh, I love that eggplant bag, but I never wore it because it didn't have a shoulder strap until Gianni Chiarini sent me the shoulder strap. Did I say it was Gianni Carini? They're Gianni Carini. Sometimes I mix up M. Jemmy and Gianni Carini. M. Jemmy is the Italian place that I get my shoes from. Gianni Carini is the Italian place that I get my handbags from. So I ended up going to Fenty and I went to the store. I went to the flagship in New York City and they had an array of different shoulder straps. I am a fool and I spent even more money on this bag that I've already told you is not worth the price at which I paid for it. But I bought a gold chain strap to attach to this bag so that I can wear it as a shoulder strap. Now I can use it on this bag and I can also use it on this bag. So in my mind, I've kind of justified my purchase. Yeah, you know, I can mix up the handle of this and I can finally get to, finally, I've only had this for like three weeks, if not like a month now, but I can use this as a shoulder, a shoulder bag with my shoulder strap. Be sure to stick around with me as I upload more videos to see how I really, really feel about it. But guys, that is it. I would say my favorite handbags are all from Gianni Carini. These are definitely my most favorite and I feel like that's saying a lot because I have a lot of designer handbags in front of me. You don't need to splurge, you don't need to spend your entire paycheck on a bag to find a bag that makes you happy. Let me know down below in the comments what is your favorite handbag that you own? Is there a handbag that you have your eye on? I would love to hear. If you could pick one handbag for my collection, let me know which one would it be? I think like if I was watching this video and I didn't know what any of them were like, I probably pick the Chanel just because it's Chanel, if I'm being honest. But which handbag would you pick? Thank you guys so, so much for joining me. I had a wonderful time as always, and I really hope to see you in my next one. Bye, guys. Mwah.